been made. Move to return from executive session. Second. Yes. 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 Good evening, everybody. If you would join in, uh, in the stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Move to adopt the agenda. Second. Yes. 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 All right. We have a couple of presentations and recognitions as soon as I find them. The first is an honor of a guy named. Jim Mason. Is there anybody from Beach Acres here? No. Okay. Well, for those of you that don't know, Jim Mason is the current CEO of Beach Acres, and he is retiring in June. Uh, officially, June 30th is his last day. So we have prepared a resolution of appreciation for Jim, and I'll just read a little bit of it here. So Jim, whereas Jim Mason led Beach Acres Parenting Center through an incredible evolution of purpose and programs f focused on strengthening families so children could achieve their unique potential. And whereas early in his tenure, Jim Mason led the former General Protestant Orphan Home through its transformation from a 19th century orphanage to a 21st century parenting center, as it is today, and where... It was his vision that led to the creation of Beach Acres proprietary national strength parenting model, which is the embodiment of his unique philosophy and provides parents and teachers with the tools to intentionally build on their child's innate strengths by mindfully doing so. And whereas he has overseen the expansion of Beach Acres reach into the community to achieve greater impact on the lives of parents and children, which has led to solid investments in schools, healthcare, and child welfare, which has made a positive impact on more than the 13,000 children, parents, teachers, and health care providers in Southwest Ohio every year. Jim Mason, in June of this year, will have completed 42 years of exemplary service to the community, children, and families in the region, and the Anderson Township community. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Township Trustees that this board does hereby proclaim June 30th, 2021, as Jim Mason Day in Anderson Township in honor of his 42 years of service. So if he was here, we'd clap and say great, but uh, no, it's pretty cool. They've been a big fixture of our township, and we are happy to do this. So and That's a resolution, so I'll be happy to second that. Yes. Yes. Yes, and I believe the new CEO has announced and it's the um, superintendent of Cincinnati Public Schools. Yeah. So. yeah, big changes over there. That's a, he does great work, so congratulations. Are they on? His is on. Mine's on. My, mine wasn't. Okay. All right, our next proclamation resolution is designating May 16th through the 23rd of this year as Public Works Week in Anderson Township. Uh, our Public Works Director, Eric Lingenbuehl, uh, is here. I will, uh, I will read this. And uh, so I would move that, well, here, I'll just read the whole thing. I'm, just, I'm doing it because of you. <clears throat> Whereas public works professionals focus on infrastructure, facilities, and services that are of vital importance to sustainable and resilient communities and to the public health, high quality of life, and well-being of the people of Anderson Township, and whereas these infrastructure, facilities, and services could not be provided without the dedicated effort 
of public works professionals who are engineers, managers, and employees at all levels of government and the private sector who are responsible for rebuilding, improving, and protecting our nation's transportation, water supply, water treatment, and solid waste systems, public buildings, and other structures and facilities essential for our citizens. And whereas public works professionals have continued to provide these essential services during the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, and whereas it is in the public interest for the citizens, civic leaders, and children in Anderson Township to gain knowledge of and to maintain an ongoing interest and understanding of the importance of public works and public works program in their respective communities. And whereas the year 2021 marks the 61st annual National Public Works Week sponsored by the American Public Works Association. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Township Trustees of Anderson Township that this board does hereby proclaim May 16th through the 23rd, 2021 as National Public Works Week in Anderson Township. Second. Mr. Pavis? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gert? Yes. And we have one final one, and it's a proclamation designating May as Bike Month in Anderson. I am not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to say May is Bike Month in Anderson. So we'll go with that. Second. But Yes, Mr. Stone. Yes. Mr. Gert. Yes, but I will say coming off the uh, the trail opening and yeah. down at the Ohio River Trail, it's it's a timely thing. So it is. A lot of trails going on around Anderson, which is very cool. Get your bike out, wear your helmet. Wear a helmet. Thanks, Steve. You're welcome. All right. Moving on, we have a public hearing tonight. Mr. Drury will present. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. While Paul is messing around with the technology, I'm going to officially open the public hearing for case 1-2021 Anderson 7887 Beachmont Avenue. Found it. Got it. <laughs> Good luck, Paul. <laughs> All right, so this is a zone change request in case 1-2021 Anderson. It's for the property located at 7867, 7877, and 7887 Beachmont Avenue. The request for the applicant is Douglas Compton, DJC uh, Partners LLC, on behalf and Anderson Township, on behalf of Dennis Corrales, 7877 Beachmont Avenue, and Anderson Township Board of Township Trustees, who are the property owners. The request is a zone change from E Retail and OO Planned Office to EE Planned Retail, and the request is to convert the existing Anderson Automotive Building into a restaurant. Uh, remove or demolish the former Corellis uh, or the audio business and then have the vacant parcel that's owned by the township be used for parking. The site is approximately 1.16 acres. There's 136 feet of frontage on Beachmont Avenue and 302 feet of frontage on King Louis Court. And we've just talked about the existing uses. There are extra staff reports out on the table if anybody wanted to, to look at them. So we'll go through the presentation fairly quickly. The first hearing was before Hamilton County Regional Planning Commission on April the 1st, 2021. We recommended approval with six conditions. The second hearing was before our Anderson Township Zoning Commission. And this was April the 26th, 2021, who also recommended approval with conditions and two variances. 
This is the site in question. It's on the south side of Beachmont at the corner of King Louis Court. The front, the 7877 parcel is the Anderson Automotive property. The 7867 is a former Corrales, and then the 7887 is the vacant parcel owned by the township. This is the zoning map. The red area is zoned retail, whether it's straight retail or plain unit development. Mm -hmm. The uh, 7887 is OO planned office. The orange area is planned multifamily or, or multifamily, and then the yellow is single family. This is the aerial of the site in question. The topography map, it has a slight decrease in grade to the southern portion of the site away from Beachmont Avenue. And this is the Anderson Township future land use map from our 2016 comprehensive plan. The entire site is, is identified for retail, general retail. These are some of the site photos looking west on Beachmont Avenue at the Cor uh, Corrales building uh, and then the parking for the Anderson Automotive. This is looking east toward the intersection of King Louis Court at City Bird. This is looking north toward Ollie's and the shopping center directly across the street. And this is King Louis Court with new curb. This is the Corrales building. And then this is the vacant piece in the back that is owned by the township. So this is the proposed site plan. There is a right in right out access that is proposed off of Beachmont Avenue with two full access points off of King Louis Court. There is no driveway that is proposed, but there is a outdoor seating area that's proposed along King Louis Court. And this outdoor seating area, which is covered, is located 10 feet from King Louis Court. So that is one of the proposed or the requested variances, 10 feet where a 30 foot front yard setback is required. Uh, the other variance request is for both the parking off of King Louis and the parking off of Beachmont. The first parking spaces need to be 30 feet from the right of way. And, and I believe this request may be eliminated off of King Louis, but we'll hear from the applicant on that. So that was the other variance that was uh, requested. They are proposing cross access. Um, most recently, the Zoning Commission approved a PUD for a KFC at the dry cleaners con dry cleaner concepts, uh, which is shown on this map. So they were also required to allow for cross access, which leaves one property in, in between Puppy Wood. Um, so hopefully there will be a future cross access connection. This will allow those properties to have access to the signal at King Louis Court. And then the dumpster enclosure uh, landscaping is proposed. This is the landscaping plan and the lighting plan. These are the elevation drawings. Again, the existing building is proposed to be reused. Uh, the bays would actually be uh, reused as well with garage doors that could open up to the patio for patio seating. You can see the elevation on the north elevation on the bottom of the screen. That's the, uh, you can see the patio with the uh, overhang that would need a variance off of King Louis Court and that would be the beachfront frontage. The main door would be off of the parking lot on the west elevation, and then you see the south elevation, which is the rear elevation. These are some of the architectural renderings. Again, a complete remodel of the existing building. So as far as zoning res resolution compliance, uh, this is the one variance is being requested for a 10 foot side yard or front yard setback off of King Louis Court for the patio area. Um, there was an area uh, parking lot screening that was not adequate um, and the applicant is proposing to increase the landscaping in that area. This is for a solid buffer along the southern property line um, that is adjacent to the apartments. This needs to be a solid screen. We talked about the access, the parking setbacks from the right of way of Beachmont Avenue and King Louis Court, and I believe this is the request is being eliminated. Um, the lighting plan that was submitted was not compliant with our lighting standards, so that will need to be uh, resubmitted uh, to come into compliance. The plans that were evaluated with this request are Anderson plan, the 2016 comprehensive plan, which encourages a general retail use at this property. So this zoning change is consistent with that. 
It's also consistent with the economic development chapter of the comprehensive plan as well as land use and development. Our Anderson Trails plan recommends sidewalks along Beachmont Avenue and along all street frontages and there is a sidewalk that is proposed along both King Louis Court to connect to the apartments as well as Beachmont Avenue. And then our design guidelines, um, site planning, outdoor spaces, it does encourage outdoor seating area which this is uh, proposed to include and then the architecture they are using an existing building so but they are adding elements to bring it uh, modernize it and bring it uh, more in compliance with our design standards the Beachmont plan encourages cross access connection from cleaner concepts out to King Louis court and as I stated earlier they are proposing this um, the original plan that was submitted did not align with the future KFC, but I believe the applicants have revised their plan to make sure that those two drives align in the future. Um, the Beachmont plan also encourages um, reduced curb cuts on Beachmont Avenue, and they are, or limited curb cuts on Beachmont Avenue, and they are proposing a right in, right out. So the Zoning Commission recommended approval of the zone change for the following reasons. In regional planning, along with Zoning Commission, recommend the following conditions. Number one, that the plan be revised to comply with the requirements of the Hamilton County Thoroughfare Plan, which includes dedication of right-of-way that is equivalent to 60 feet of half right-of-way. Number two, that the landscape plan be in accordance with condition number three, be revised uh, as part of the final development review plan process. Number three, the additional streetscape elements be included in that open area in the front yard along uh, Beachmont Avenue. Number four, that the lighting plan be resubmitted to be in compliance. Number five, that the parking lot shall be redesigned a minimum of 30 foot setback for the parking spaces. And again, the, the Zoning Commission recommended approval of a variance off of King Louie, but I believe the site plan has been modified that that's not needed. Um, number six, that the existing freestanding sign be removed and any proposed building mounted or freestanding signs be resubmitted as part of the final development plan. And we can come back to that as part of the right-of-way dedication. Um, number seven, that a vehicular easement be made for cross access. Number eight, that the cross access drive be modified to align with the future KFC. Number nine, that there should be streetscaping or protective features added for patio safety. And this was a recommended condition from our Zoning Commission since the patio would be 10 feet from the roadway. Um, and I didn't, I didn't elaborate too much on number one. Um, the county engineer recommended dedication of right-of-way consistent with the thoroughfare plan, which is 60 feet. Currently, there is right-of-way um, and that is provided with the additional right-of-way that would put the existing sign in the right-of-way. So that was the condition that, that the sign be removed and put a new sign outside the right-of-way. The following variances for the front yard setback, which we've already discussed, and then the parking setback off of King Louie Court. So I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Not specifically related to this, but was there has there been any discussion with the gentleman that owns the Puppywood property about that easement? The township has had discussions with him in the past. I, I, I forget most recently, but they've never been interested um, in <laughs> allowing for cross access across their property. Which I know has been a big part of what we've tried to do up and down Beachmont. So, so was curious since now it looks like he's got a yes, tie Yes, and I'm not sure about the current, I think the current owners have even had discussions with them as well. Our hope is once the uh, KFC and if this is approved, this goes in, the two come right to the property, the property owner will, will see the benefit of allowing for that connection. We'll try to encourage you it look, again. You look pretty sure about that. D, Andrew, do you guys have any questions? No, I'd be happy. I think it's a, it's a pretty, pretty great layout. It'd be nice. I mean, it's going to be nice to get rid of that uh, building, that, the old Grove building, which is you know, comes way up close to Beachmont and definitely uh, it'll open up that area quite a bit. So <coughs> I'm impressed with their design. Um, you, the 
applicant is, would you guys like to come up and yes, present? So I promised the last one, which is the most exciting zoning hearing ever. So uh, to, to live up to that, we'll try to be quick. Uh, good evening, my name is Bear Tellis with Keating, Musing, and Creek Camp. Here on behalf of the property owner, uh, Doug Thompson, through a couple of different entities here on the site. Um, appreciate the opportunity tonight. Um, this is a pretty exciting project. We're happy to be involved with it. Um, I don't want to rehash everything Paul went through, but we'll mention that this is, in my opinion, a home run upgrade from what's there today. Uh, it's a pretty cool rendering. When it came out, we saw the renderings. We were really excited about the, the garage doors, the open feature, uh, the, the updates to the architecture. Uh, so it'll be an exciting development. There are a couple things through the conditions we wanted to go through um, just to, to be transparent of where we are in the transaction. Th there is a deal in place with the current tenant. Um, of, of course, we signed the lease with them prior to getting zoning approval, so the lease is contingent upon zoning approval. So they have one more crack at walking away from this deal if the zoning doesn't come in the way we need it to. Um, and where that really manifests itself is partly with the ODOT taking for the thoroughfare plan. Um, we are concerned that losing that sign could be a problem for our tenant. Um, you know, we think in reality it's unlikely that that portion of Beachmont will ever be expanded. Uh, King Louie's a dead end road. There's not a lot of traffic there, so there's really not a need for a turn lane. Um, I know that is part of the kind of standard operating procedure when we go through rezonings, particularly to the PD district, but we don't think it makes a whole lot of practical sense here, and it just creates a potential problem that we would like to avoid. Um, Paul did mention a couple variances on the parking. Um, if you look at the plan, there's what, six or seven or so spaces that are into the 30-foot setback on King Louie. There is a potential to, we can rework the site, but doing that loses 10 spaces, and we don't want to lose those 10 spaces. Um, you know, restaurants, retailers love parking, and, you know, from a practical safety perspective, it's not a high traffic road. We don't think that really imposes any concerns. Um, I do believe staff was in favor of it at the prior level. Uh, we are, were able to modify the access drive so it will kind of tie in a little cleaner with the KSC site, so that was an easy update. Um, we've added fencing all along the back of the property. What's that? South side. South side of the property. Um, the lighting plan was due back from our engineers today. We don't yet have it, but that will be updated and fixed, um, so that will be compliant. And the rest of the site we really think lays out nicely. Um, so really the only material comment on our on our side is we'd like to not have to give up the 30 feet of right away because again really all that's going to do is force the elimination of that sign um, our plan is to update the sign and make it a little more aesthetically pleasing uh, but we'd rather not have that discussion with our tenant if we can avoid it you know retailers can be pretty particular about signage and the like so there's two there's really two things there's the yeah. sign and then the parking that so there, there were t the, the variance requests were for the patio overhang, the shade structure that encroaches into the 30-foot setback. You can see that line where the patio is. Right. Mm -hmm. And then there was the parking spaces on the southern side. You can see there the what, one, two, three, four, five or six spaces encroach into that 30-foot setback. Uh, we, those, those are the ones we would like to keep. <coughs> which, one, which, which parking spaces Paul. are we talking about? Um, the, the sign, oh, I'm sorry, Joe, go ahead. No, you go. The sign, they're allowing for a sign, they're just making you move it and bring it down to the monument sign. Am I missing something? You want to keep the existing well, sign we, that's we, there? Well, we won't be able to put the new, even if you do a new sign, you won't be able to put it into the right-of-way. So it's going to be pushed back further off of Beachmont Avenue. Right. So that's the concern of our tenants. They're going to say this isn't as vis visible as what they signed up for and what they were hoping to have. Okay, because I can barely read that. So I see the 30-foot minimum. Yeah. So you'd be way back. You'd be yeah, it pushes the sign back pretty far. Pretty far. Um, and I wouldn't expect the state let to let us put a sign in there right away. Um, so there's also the, the added cost of having to put in a new sign, um, which. Yeah, but part of the thing we're doing when we right. redevelop is we're trying to bring some of these uh, understood. signs down, <laughs> which no, understood. a lot of communities are doing. So Th this is not a particularly tall sign. Um, I think. Is, is the current right. sign in compliance or no? With our rec our zoning guidelines. I believe it's mm -hmm. too close. So let me but so a couple of things, if I can just clarify about the right of way. So the right of way dedication is a requirement of the Hamilton County engineer for any zone change. Right. And they require
required to be in compliance with the Hamilton County thoroughfare, which calls for a half right of way 60 feet on Beachmont Avenue. There is already, um, it's not, there's already, um, the applicant would be required to dedicate 22 more feet to be in compliance with 60 feet from what's already there. So it's not 60 feet from the edge of the pavement or, so it would be 22 additional feet from where it's already there. The township sent an email to the county engineer saying that we would support a variance of only 11 additional feet. This would allow for a future turn lane, not necessarily constructed now, but if it was warranted, a future turn lane, right turn lane from, from here on to King Louis, very similar to what was done at Wolf Angle and Beachmont in front of first, in front of the bank. There was just a little jog in turn lane and that's helped that intersection immensely. So we sent an email to the Hamilton County engineer saying that we would support a variance request. However, the county engineer is the only one that can approve that request, not the trustees because it's their requirement. So with 11 feet versus 22 feet, it actually puts the sign real close to where it is now because uh, it has to be set back at least 10 feet from the edge of pavement. So there's not that much difference of where a sign would be at 11 feet versus where it currently is. But the zoning commission was very adamant about the existing sign being re redone to be in compliance with current signage. I don't, I, don't I agree well, with that. I, just wanted to signs, I agree with that too. I do too. Yeah, I, I agree with the sign. I mean, the, the redesign of the sign, because right. I think the sign there, I mean, the whole purpose of redoing all these things is to make things look nicer mm -hmm. and that sign is not is not great I guess I'm a little can bear to your point I mean if the sign moves a foot or two to the south based on what you Paul sent to the Hamilton County engineers is that okay I mean look at the end of the day it's gonna be up to our tenant I, I would think you know a foot or two I, I would think they're reasonable and wouldn't yeah. blow a gasket I over that yeah um, it's so, certainly so how do we get that resolved Paul we're still wait I mean We can, you know, if we need to do it, I think we would. Um, like I said, in the real world, is it a huge difference? I don't think so, but it's enough that you know, our tenant wants to sign there and we would like to keep it there as much as we can. Yeah, well, I mean. Well, I mean, the hard part about, I mean, to be fair, the hard part about the sign would be that it's going to be almost in the same spot with the utilities and the structure, you know, the foundation. Moving it a foot or two, you're really not adding a whole lot to it. I mean, if you're, if you're bringing it down, No, for sure. So that would yeah. save you space. For sure. Space cost. You know. I don't know if that sign has any lights on it, though, does it? Yeah, I, Whatever. I think it, it does. Lights up, yeah, yeah. I think it does. Yeah. I've seen it plenty of times. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I'm going to take a wild guess that people are going to find this place with or without that no, sign. Well, they're, well I understand the tenant's concerned, but yeah. well, no one, look, no that's one our looks interest, at, right? No one looks at Dewey's sign when they go to Dewey. No, yeah. no, no so that, that's that's fair, and that that's we get that. Um, um, so I think, I mean, unless you guys, I mean, I, I think it's worth approaching Hamilton County to see if you can do the 11 foot setback versus the 30. Yeah. Because I agree, I think a sign is necessary and I don't, it, it's not gonna do you any good if it's buried by the patio. And I don't, I don't know if right. there's another spot you can move it on the side or not, but. Um, be careful because of puppy ears. I mean, they're building. Right yeah, by right. There and yeah, that visibility going out of there, but you're right, uh, you're, you're right turnout only coming out of there. So yeah, puppy wood is right yeah. on the road. Block of signage for sure. And, and worth noting, we are taking out a full curb cut and replacing it with a right in, right out. So that will help right. the crazies who try to turn left at it. Well, you, and, well and someone's you still going to so try and turn left. I can <laughs> <probably> <laughs> well, it, no guarantees on that. But. No, you come out, you're protected. You by come the out the, the back. And and right, well, not, right, right. But currently today, there's a full right. curb cut. Oh, right. no, you're right. right. Currently it is. So it'll be, it's a, it will yeah, be safer, safer right. because you can come out the back and go out the light, right. which nobody wants to do. But I mean, I think, Josh, your point, I think, get through today and then we if our tenant makes an issue of it we can go to the county and address it at that point okay I I, I mean I don't the in my mind I don't have a problem with the parking um, I mean I, I I want you guys to be able to park cars there so I don't have a problem if we don't if we keep if we allow people to park um, and because you said if we pr if it's a 30 foot setback you're gonna lose parking right yeah the, 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 the reconfigured plan we would lose about 10 spaces and yeah. they would have a bigger issue with that. On the King Louis side. 
I'm sorry. I'm assuming you can. You can find it. Well, because we're going to reconfigure the drive aisle. Ah, okay, gotcha. It, it, it's not just those five spaces. Okay. I don't have a problem with I don't that. have a problem with parking either, but the sign. I mean, it's not butting up against people's houses. It's nope. not. No, I don't know. And there's fencing all along the southern portion there. Right. Which one is that? But I, so that I don't have a problem agreeing to. I, I think the, um, I think the sign though is. Look, every development along Beachmont, we've managed to get better signage. I, I we'd like you to try and do that. Okay. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. This is a public hearing, so at this time, if anybody would like to step forward and in favor or opposed, please do so. I don't have to use this technology. I hate no. it. No. Okay, good. You can just talk. Hi, I'm Emily Wenling. I um, live off of Elmdale, which is in Mount Washington, down by Big Ash Brewery, which I think you oh, guys know. This is about this hearing. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. I got excited. You, you with my have turn. a chance. To say, <laughs> this is about I, this I particular think, issue. I think I know what you're here to yeah, talk about. Yeah, we know about. what you're. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, just that's okay. In a minute, in you're a doing minute. good. Yeah. Let's keep that going. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Does anybody have any comments on this particular development? I don't see anybody running up here. So, I'll close the public comment section. Um, Paul, can you come back up? Um, so the recommendation from the Zoning Commission was to approve a variance for parking off of King Louis, okay. the 30 foot setback. Um, they did not recommend approving a variance off of Beachmont Avenue, so that's that was in their resolution that was presented to you. So the, the two variances that the Zoning Commission recommended approval was one for the outside patio with cover, 10 foot front yard setback versus 30, and then a setback for the, the parking spaces off of King Louie. Those are the two variances recommended by the Zoning Commission. Okay, so if we want to, if we go to adopt this or approve this, how do we word it so that it's There was a uh, draft resolution based off of the Zoning Commission's resolution that had those comments in it. Hmm. Paul, would that be number five on page three of the resolution? Well, that's the Hamilton County. Right, we can't. So the conditions recommended by Hamilton County Regional Planning and the Zoning Commission were one through nine, which yeah. included the right of way consistent with the Hamilton County Thoroughfare Plan. A variance request to the county engineer can reduce that, and we have gone on record supporting a reduced right of way. The variances are from Article 3.15 B2, and that's to allow a 10 foot setback for the canopy in the patio. Where is that? That's on, on page, page four. four. Back up, page four. Sorry. I'm sorry, we can, if we back up, the recommended conditions were on page three. Right. The variance is, the first variance was for the setback, 10 foot setback for the building, uh, which is page four. And then the second variance was Article 5.3D, lowercase d, and this was to allow uh, parking spaces located within 30 feet of the right of way of King Louis Court. And there wasn't a specific dimension put on that specifically because there was a condition to realign the drive well, so we didn't know what that would specifically be. So this is okay, ready to go like it is? If you all agree to it, yes. Even though it says number five, we can't do it then, right? Okay. All right. Right? Number five is not us, correct? 
on page three. 30 foot setbacks for parking spaces from each month. Yes, that's what they're your, uh, those are the parking spaces. Over here, so that, yeah, that's just so like that it's drawn. A, just like it's drawn right now. The right of way won't impact that, so if, they may, I'm sorry, they, they may lose one or two spaces off of Beachmont, depending on where that right of way falls, if a variance is, is granted or not. If a variance is granted, I don't believe it impacts it at all. Okay. A variance from the right of way. So we can but this approve this the as yes. written. Yes. And then you're taking it to the county. We feel that this was okay. consistent with what yeah, they discussed. We're not, we're not right. Okay. All right. Good. Any other discussion? Do we have a motion? I move to approve and adopt a zone change from E Retail and OO Planned Office District to EE Planned Retail District for property located at 7867, 7877, and 7887 Beachmont Avenue. Second. Mr. Bassett? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerd? Yes. Thanks, everyone. Thank Gentlemen, you. Good, good luck with your project. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, it's good stuff. It's exciting. It's exciting. Yep. Thank you. Now, we okay. move into the public portion of the meeting where anyone is welcome to come up and address this board. Hey, my name is Jan Paul. <laughs> Trick you guys. Um, thank you, Vicki, for honoring that public records request. I appreciate it. I did not get a chance to go through all of them yet because I got it yesterday and I don't read that quickly. But. Um, basically what I gathered from that information was that I'm not alone in the complaints that you guys are receiving about the live venue, music venue at Big Ash. Um, not really trying to rehash everything from last year. We came here and uh, there were some promises made and have not been kept. And we're just trying to get some peace. I mean, the music is loud. That's one thing. But when you can't even go inside your house to escape the loudness and you still hear it, what are you supposed to do? There's Emily, what's your address? Literally nowhere to go. I live at 2548 Elmdale Drive. I live at 2548 Okay, well, Elmdale. you can come up after her. And, um, 2548 Elm. Yeah, Elmdale. Elmdale. Sorry. And uh, it's just, I mean, I think we all know the issues with that area. The bowl that it sits in definitely makes the music a lot louder than maybe they intended it to be, but the fact remains that we literally can't even escape it in our house. I mean, I've gone in my daughter's bathroom, there's not even a window in there and it's, you can still hear it. Um, countless emails later between myself and Mr. Emery have really not resulted in anything getting better. Um, in an effort to not just be a complainer, I'm not trying to be Mrs. Kravitz or anything, but I did tell him one day, I said, hey, just so you know, the volume today is awesome. We can still hear it, but it's not so loud that we can't entertain outside or be in our house. I'm trying to be neighborly, and I want to see him succeed. I like beer. I like music, but, you know, there comes a time when it's too much. Um, in my efforts to do some research, I did email Mr. Drury, and he stated in his email back to me that Big Ash was given an exception because of the vacant lot to go out further into the parking lot, which is definitely adding on because I think they have to lift the music louder to get over the noise from Beachmont Avenue and then reach the very end of the parking lot tables, which is adding to our distress. And I'm really just here because I don't know what else to do is just to ask that that exception be lifted or rescinded. I'm not really sure what you do with exceptions. Um, I also understand that it's zoned for business retail right now, but I know that there's apartments supposed to be going in, so I didn't know if the zoning would go to residential and that would change some of our problems as well. Um, I only know that because everybody keeps telling us, just be fine, just deal with it. There's going to be construction soon. The music will be going away. We heard that last fall. 
I often heard, there's one more song, there's one more set, one more month, two more months, the construction's coming, but we're kind of all a little tired of waiting for it. And one of the things that I did read in my public records request was an email from Mr. Emery to his staff, which began by saying they, which are us, the complainers, I guess, they are in Cincinnati and we're in Anderson. So kind of made it sound like they're untouchable or unwilling to even help us because they just have a disregard for Mount Washington, apparently. However, um, I would like to point out that many of my neighbors work in Anderson, grew up in Anderson, have friends and family in Anderson, shop in Anderson, so you, I would think that you would want to not alienate the neighbors that are closest to your business. Um, also in my research, I found that it's not just Mount Washington complaining. I found people from Signal Hill, Turpin Hills, people on Redfield, pretty much anywhere surrounding that bowl are having the same issues. One guy on, I think it was next door neighbor app said, his son couldn't even go to bed because the bed was shaking from the base. And that's 10.30 at night on a school night. It gets kind of old. Um, this isn't like a weekend Anderson Days situation. This isn't party on the plaza a couple days a month. It's every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, sometimes all day on Sunday. Um, with summer coming, we're not sure if it's going to be seven days a week. We don't know that there's anything that prohibits them from doing that. And I just would, you know, asking for a little help in this situation and just, you know, I don't know what else to do. We can't find peace anywhere. So we came to you guys to find some. And that's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for Thank giving you. me a chance to talk with you guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. I have a case up in Hendrick and I also live on Elmdale Drive next to Emily at 2539. Um, I'm not as forgiving as Emily. <laughs> I've lived there 31 years and um, you can't sit on your deck, you know, when the weather's nice out and you have the windows in your house open. You can't sit out there because you're forced to listen to whatever music they're playing. I can't sit on my deck and stream my own music anymore. And then when it, even when it starts to get humid and you close your windows or you close your windows because they are playing, it still comes in through the deck door and the closed windows, the closed deck door and the closed windows. Um, it just, I didn't think when, I was so happy when they were coming to um, Anderson when it, his big ass was going to open up. I thought it was a great idea. But then all of a sudden, they've got live concert music in their parking lot. It just, you know, we're all frustrated and we don't know what to do other than maybe protest out in front of the place and say, you know, don't go to big ash. They're not being a good neighbor. And I feel like, you know, well, why should I be a good neighbor? You know, I'm a little bit older and meaner than Emily. But <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Going once. I'm Dave Emery, the founder and managing partner of Big Ash Brewing, and uh, just came to listen to Emily and hear what you and the neighbors have to say. Heard this before, and it seems like a, a point of contention. I um, understand that they might be unhappy with what they're hearing. They don't like to hear the music. Um, I think I would, I would probably uh, argue the point of being a good neighbor. I think there's hard to find a, a better neighbor in Anderson Township, as far as the business is concerned, then Big Ash Brewing. We've um, started up this business trying to pick up a piece of the township that hadn't been doing real well. Got it going, got hit with the COVID, and have scrambled to try to keep the business going. It's a big investment for myself and a lot of partners that we have involved, uh, trying to keep the, uh, the business going, provide employment for probably about 30 different people. Uh, we've uh, tried to find kind of a win-win for a lot of different constituencies in the area of musicians that have been out of work for a year, the nonprofit organizations that have not been able to have any fundraising activities for a year, um, and try to bring a little bit of life back to the community where people haven't been able to go out uh, to have some fun 
and still to this day are very reluctant to go inside. So uh, having an outdoor uh, arrangement is a good one. So we've um, invited the, the township, the sheriff, the um, Department of Health to come, take a look at what we're doing, take advantage of it, uh, let us know what we're doing. We've tried to comply with whatever and all regulations for COVID and everything else that we've had and done our best to, to be a, a benefit and an asset to the community. We've had a fundraiser for Dan Barner Foundation uh, for May We Help, one in five. We've got the Special Olympics coming out in June. We've got uh, CASA for Claremont Kids um, coming out in October. May We Help's coming back for a car show. We're doing everything we can to use that parking lot for the benefit of the community and the owners of it have also been super cooperative and helpful in allowing us to do that. So I realize might not be appreciated by the folks that are so far away, but there are a lot of people, a lot, a lot more people that do appreciate what we're doing, think it's a great thing. And so I would ask you guys to hang in there for your patience. Uh, the people that live close to us, a half a mile away, three quarters of a mile, I don't hear complaints. It seems to be this group that has taken offense to it. Maybe the music travels up there you know, more loudly than it does elsewhere, but anyway, that's uh, that's kind of where we're at with this thing. So uh, if we're doing something wrong, if we're violating township regulations, uh, let me know, we'll change it up. We've agreed to stop at 9.30 during the week, uh, 10.30 on the weekends, and I think that's within the gentleman's agreement that we've had. And if there's a, a sound level uh, to be regulated, I don't know what it is. I go to the back of the beer garden with a sound meter, check it myself, I insist when a band comes out there that we have our own sound system, own sound engineer there to try to keep things not as loud as they could be. So, best we can do. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Anybody else? We we don't. It's not the way we work here, okay. but you are more than welcome to email anyone that you already have with any other comments that you have okay one one thing i want to make clear though is that you mentioned um, that they were given an exception we township does not give them anything right so i don't i don't i, I think maybe mr drury was referring to their landlord okay. so um and that probably was because of COVID. you know how they have that outdoor area because normally that that would not have been granted. That's not part of their parcel. Right. The second question I have, and, and maybe Paul or Steve, you can answer. When, when do you, we do know that the apartment's construction, at least we've heard, now there's a definitive date when they're gonna start doing stuff. Do you know when that is? Or do you guys have any update on that development? I'm sure Mr. Emery might as well, but um, I'll do our best. We've, uh, we, we both have information from the landlord. We're okay. currently working, in fact, there's authorization tonight to enter into a cooperative agreement with that landlord or the potential buyer that uh, to help facilitate the demolition that uh, we are hopeful will occur begin later this summer. Um, but I don't believe that'll play into the, um, no pun intended, the, the arrangement that's down there because that construction demolition will be limited to the building area. Uh, our understanding is that it would continue from there into construction, but um, this bureau is still waiting for the final zoning approval and then not to get building permit. So it's still quite a ways off from construction, which will have a larger impact, of course, okay. on, on that site space. And my other um, understanding is that Big Ash is, is a separate parcel. So is the old Starbucks. So is the parcel to the east of Big Ash, which is where the beer garden resides. Um, those three parcels are for sale, I believe. Um, so I don't know where all that stands, but... Um, the original plan was that there was going to be a new retail strip built to the east of Big Ash, where that beer garden sits. Um, so I don't know. Have you have you guys heard any update on that? We we've had some inquiries, but we don't have any plans that have been submitted to us. And, and just to clarify, no no exceptions have been given. The intent of my email was saying that generally with uses or establishments like this throughout the township parking limits their ability to have these concerts because and the amount of crowds. I said Big Ash is the exception because there's a vacant shopping center behind them. I just wanted to clarify that. We have not given any yeah. exceptions to Big Ash. Okay, thanks.
Okay. Anyone else before we close public session? I don't see anybody. So we will move on to trustee comments. Andrew, D, anything? Thank you. Um, well, I appreciate your comments. I just, I, I, they're not falling on deaf ears. I just wanted to know that they're not falling on deaf ears. So, and I also appreciate Big Ass Brewery. They do do a lot in the community. So I'm hoping that we can come kind of, some kind of resolution here. So, uh, having said all that, I just, we're here without mask on. So I uh, just want to thank all our staff for everything they've done over the last year and however many months to get us to this point. Um, it's not been easy, but I think we've done a great job and that's, that's, to, that's hats off to our staff. So thank you all. So that's it. Uh, I'd, I'd echo what Dee said. Thank you for your comments. I feel your frustration. Uh, hopefully there'll be some more conversations that we could figure out a resolution or something that can be done. Um, I'd also like to thank staff because for just particularly, we just announced that we are having our 4th of July parade. And it may not be a large issue to some people, but getting back to normal, I think, is exactly what this community and other communities around the country need. And it takes a lot of planning, and it's going to be a you know, monumental effort it's scaled back, but it's still going to be a big deal and a burden on our staff because we it wasn't planned for, and we usually we start well, well, well in advance. So I just hats off to staff for for being so nimble and so uh, accommodating to uh, get this going so very quickly. And uh, yeah, it is nice to kind of see faces and get back to normal again. So it's nice to be here. And for those that aren't aware, our, our parade is on July 3rd, July 3rd at, at 10 a.m., not the 4th. Avenue. Saturday, uh, July 3rd. The information is on our website. And uh, I believe the see the application, is the, the process is on our website as well. Monday. Okay. Yeah, on Monday. So, again, it, it may not seem like a big deal. I know a lot of communities have canceled theirs. We could have very easily have kept it canceled. We did not. Once the mandates are lifted and things went in that direction. Uh, they were very nimble and uh, changed their plans and I, I really appreciate it. And uh, the guidelines will be spelled out, so I hope that everyone abides by them and it's a very festive and uh, successful event. Josh? And that guy sitting down at the end yeah, is, uh, does the lion's share of the work. So Steve, thank you in advance for mm -hmm. all the work that you're gonna do to pull this off. He doesn't and look happy right now. But <laughs> <laughs> You will be. <laughs> and uh, s speaking of other events, we will also be holding our Memorial Day uh, ceremony. Um, Vicki, remind me of the timing. Yes, it's on Memorial Day. It'll be on the South Plaza by the Veterans Memorial. The ceremony actually begins at noon, but we're asking those that wish to have the name of a, a loved one read arrive by 1145 so that we can record that information. Uh, this is in conjunction with American Legion Post 318. And uh, it's a very solemn ceremony and it's important to this community. We were able to do it virtually last year uh, and the same individual that, that spoke for us virtually last year is coming back this year to do a for do the uh, speaking engagement live. It is Lieutenant Colonel Kirk Greiner from the United States Mil uh, Marine Corps, retired. He's served in a variety of positions at home and abroad. His personal decorations include the Defense Meritorious Service Medal, Meritorious Service Medal, Navy Marine Corps Commendation Medal, the Navy Marine Corps Achievement Medal, and the Combat Action Ribbon. So we're looking forward to that ceremony. Okay. Ask that you join us. Thanks, Vicki. Moving on to fiscal officer report, Ken Dietz. Thank you. Our financial reports are as of the end of April. Uh, we just got our uh, real estate tax settlement in during April, and we have not um, calculated all the revenues. But I, if they're not on a report, but I have looked at them, they're uh, they're exceeding our estimates uh, by three or four percent. 
so uh, that's the good news. The rest of the revenues are a very slight part of our total revenue package. So we're expecting at the end of the year or in the next coming months we'll be uh, ahead on our revenue estimates. The uh, appropriations expenditures are lagging behind slightly uh, simply because we always have a waiting time to pay our construction costs for new roads, curbs, and everything like that. So uh, we will be under budget at the end of the year on our expenses also. The, um, we do have a couple appropriation changes which are kind of strange, but uh, we, we have the, the new project. Our newest TIF is the Stonecrest Anthology Development down Beachmont. Uh, they have a board revision hearing scheduled. They already already had a board revision hearing last year, but I think they are juggling their payments based on the fact they think they're going to get a reduction. And what that's doing is when we received our uh, revenues from last year, they were they were way down because they didn't make a payment. They put off their payment. <coughs> well, we got that payment in on our latest report for this year. So it's kind of moving things around. And what I'm hoping we can do eventually when they have the board revision hearing, which is coming up in a couple weeks, whether they win or lose, I'll be able to estimate more closely what we are going to owe the school district. <coughs> As of right now, because of what they did last year, we are $69,000 short of paying the school district off and uh, I'm asking for an appropriation change within the fund of that TIF. We have contracts that have extra money in it, and we would need $69,000 to get the school district paid. I will probably have to come back to the board after the board revision hearing or when they pay their second half taxes and find out what they paid and say we have to increase that again because we're going to get more money in and we're going to owe the school district more money. So uh, it's it's going it's going to be good news, I think. What, what, what's happened? Well, this I know, but can they just do that? Say, oh, we think it's going to be lower, so we're going to pay less. I mean, yeah, they that, they paid a hefty fine for that, by the way. Oh, they, they did. Yeah, oh, okay. they, they paid. I was going to say, they paid thirty something thousand dollars to do that. Okay. How much? Thirty-seven thousand dollar fine. Yeah. Uh, okay. No, I, I feel better now. They're also okay. asking for. <laughs> they're also asking for a three point five million dollar reduction in their value. Right. 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 So they're saying, hey, we're, if we get this, we'll we'll eat that thirty six thousand so. dollars. Okay. But it's it, it, what I'm saying is it's hard to predict, and I'll probably come back in a couple months and say, in order to fund the school district, we're gonna we're gonna have to put more money in that fund. But that means we're gonna get more money too. So. Right. And then the other uh, appropriation change within the fund is we will charge uh, election fees in our la latest settlement, and we've been trying to find out why we were charged election fees. We didn't have anything on our ballot last year that would cause that to happen. We, the last time we had something was 2019, which would have been charged last year. So we're trying to find that out but they've already taken it out of our settlement. So in order to justify that, I need, I need to put that money in the appropriation. When we get it settled, we'll it and, we'll and, it I believe, and I believe we, I don't believe there's any reason why we're being charged, but the county auditor has to call the Board of Elections, which they've done early in this week, but we haven't had an answer yet. Why is Anderson Township paying election fees? I mean, it's twelve thousand dollars. It's twelve thousand dollars. <laughs> Four is enough for the county. So I'm asking for your approval on that. Bipartisan mistake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I move to adopt the uh, appropriation changes recommended by Fiscal Officer Ken Beats. Second. Mr. Pappas. Yes. Mr. Stone. Yes. Mr. Gerr. Yes. Okay, we have a uh, item C is a request to amend resolution number 210506-05, employing fiscal office manager. Why not? I'm okay. I move.
move to amend resolution number 210506-05, authorizing the township fiscal officer to appoint Jennifer Baker as the township fiscal office manager at a rate of $85,000 per year, including benefits normally offered with full-time employment status. Furthermore, Ms. Baker will be credited with 320 hours of paid time off and with 240 of those hours held in escrow until June 20, 2022, and crediting her with 23 years service as township employee as she begins her employment with Anderson Township on June 21st, 2021. Second. Mr. Packard? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerd? Yes. And we have, uh, we're working on our tax budget right now, which is our preliminary budget for 2022. And we need to have the public hearing uh, by July 15th, according to code. I, we could ask for an extension, uh, talking to the administration and my staff and uh, some of the department heads, we feel like we should just go ahead and get it done rather than wait another month just to see where our expenses and revenues might be and might get them closer. We feel that we can be prepared by July the 15th and it has to be filed by July the 20th. So uh, we'd like to have that public hearing on our regular meeting on July 15th. I move to adopt a resolution to set a public hearing for the 2022 preliminary, preliminary tax budget. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerd? Yes. And I think we have like five uh, minutes. minutes to be approved. I move to adopt the, I mean, I move to approve the minutes of January 21, 2021, March 4th, 2021, March 18th, 2021, April 1st, 2021, and April 15th, 2021. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mr. Stone? I, I wasn't with all of these. I wasn't, I wasn't at January 21st. No, I didn't ask you for that. Okay. Okay. You want to separate them? No, that's okay. No, that's okay. I just need to separate. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerd? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. You're welcome. I don't believe we have a law director report, so back to you, Paul. pictures up um, we have a resolution before you to consider nuisance abatement at property located at 2003 Berkshire Road I don't believe the pictures were in your packet we did take pictures today the issue at this particular property is tall grass as well as trash accumulating on the property um, public health has also sent a notice regarding the trash but we're requesting nuisance abatement to go in to mow the grass and remove the garbage from the property I can answer any questions you have if you'd like more information about the property. No. There's the picture. There's the, all right, now the pictures are up. Oops, that's not, that's that's not the, the right that's picture. That's a different picture for today. So that's, this that's is the, the garbage that's accumulating on the side of the house. There's also some garbage um, that's accumulating on the front porch. Somebody else is mowing the right of way. That's that looks fun. This is the front yard. Is the house occupied? And the house is occupied. And oh this is God. the garbage that's on the front porch. Oh so Hamilton County Public Health is involved with the garbage, but it is something that we're asking for you to consider nuisance abatement to remove the trash. The house was condemned back in November, but they were able to clean out the inside in order to get back in the house. But now we're starting to accumulate garbage again on the outside. Wow. Okay. Uh, I move to adopt a resolution determining existence of nuisance owned nuisance on land owned by Jennifer Ann Lewis located at 2003 Berkshire Road in Anderson Township and providing for notice and remediation pursuant to Ohio Revised Code Section 505.87. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerd? Yes. And that's chair this time. On to a more happier topic. <laughs> Before you is a resolution accepting a donation of trees from Mr. John McAllister of Little Miami Landscape. Mr. McAllister has donated the equivalent 
equivalent of $750 worth of trees, five total, uh, five total that were planted at the Arboretum. Um, this was the first donation for the Arboretum, but Mr. McAllister has been a partner with the township in installing some of our landscape areas and trees. So we are very grateful for his generosity. Um, and he's not here. So he, he's not here today. Mr. Kaufenberg and Mr. Berno are here from the tree committee. Yep. Thank you. Uh, I move to adopt a resolution accepting donation of trees to the township from John McAllister, Little Miami Landscape, LLC, pursuant to the authority of Section 50510 of the Revised Code. Second. Mr. Babbitt? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerd? Yes. Thank you. And for those that don't know, we have an arboretum, in a certified arboretum in Anderson Township. And, like, what's the number? Like, there's not that many. Not that many. It's a big deal. Less than 500, right? In the whole world. Yeah. Well, because of the work of because our of the tree work of committee, these two gentlemen, these two right gentlemen here. are yeah. key to doing it. Yeah. And we have a wonderful tree yeah. committee here in the township that does fantastic work. Right. So it's a big deal. And if you get a chance, go out to the Heritage Center and walk around and all the trees. It's, it's a big deal. We're very proud of it. Thank you. Sure. Oh, I'm sorry, Josh. You got a question? Since it's tree related, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, keep it, I'll keep it very short. Um, I'm Bruce Burnham, I'm chairman of the, the tree committee. And I just want to give a huge shout out to Tim Coffinborg, who's picked up this whole arboretum project and run with it with passion and enthusiasm and energy that is just off the charts. It is. I awesome. can't keep up with the emails. <laughs> and I think interesting things go back and forth and so forth. But uh, I don't even try. Tim's just Tim's just done an incredible job. Yes, uh, he has. Great, great, good, loyal citizen to be very uh, engaged and enthusiastic. And really, this whole project is. Uh, but lots of other people's help, but his energy and enthusiasm has been quite impressive. So I just want to compliment him on that. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Bruce. You. Thanks, no, and Tim. And you guys know how much we appreciate the work that you do. So and, and the, these and are the are donations. These people. are volunteers, people. These are volunteers. So well done. Okay. We did that. Okay. I don't think uh, anything from the sheriff. Thanks, Dan. Eric, Public Works. Do you want to you want to buy something? Two more things. <laughs> They're expensive. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, as you guys are aware, the uh, Public Works Department budgeted uh, 2021 TIF dollars from the 94 TIF for the purchase of a new 580 case backhoe. Mm -hmm. This is to replace our 1996 case Super L backhoe, mm -hmm. which has uh, right about a little over 1,900 hours, almost 2,000 hours. So uh, I am uh, recommending that we purchase a 580 case backhoe for the total purchase price of $89,780.74 through the state bid purchase process minus the, the uh, $9,600 for our trade-in on our old one. And that's before you proceed with your consideration. Uh, I'm you ready? That's the expensive one. That's the expensive one. <laughs> and we got our money's worth out of the old one. Yes, we did. I move to adopt a resolution authorizing the purchase of equipment pursuant to Section 505.101 of the Ohio Revised Code and the disposition of a surplus motor vehicle pursuant to Section 505.10A-3 as a trade-in against said purchase. Second. Mr. Babbitt? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerd? Yes. Thanks. And next up, again, as, as you're aware, with uh, Public Works budgeted 2021 uh, TIF fund, uh, funds for uh, out of the 94 TIF for the purchase of a Bobcat uh, E42 series com compact excavator. Uh, this is to replace our 2007 435 series excavator, which is basically the same piece of equipment, uh, the same size piece of equipment, but it has uh, over 300 hours of service. Uh, I'm recommending that we uh, purchase the compact excavator for a total purchase price of $53,461.70 and I have on here that there was a trade-in yet to be determined, but I'm going to throw you a curveball. We got a trade-in purchase, a trade-in price from Bobcat for 19000 for our other old one. So we would basically be purchasing the, the new E42 series Bobcat for a total price of $34,461.70. Okay. That's I move to authorize the purchase of equipment pursuant to Section 505.101 of the fire... Of the Ohio Revised Code 
and the disposition of a surplus motor vehicle pursuant to Section 505.10A3 as a trade-in against said purchase. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerr? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. You messed the last one up, so. Not really. No, you kind of did. Yeah, you did. No, I just flowed mm -hmm. right through it. Mm -hmm. Fire and rescue. Somebody else is wanting Hello, to buy something. Yeah, what else do you want to buy? Good evening. Uh, the fire department tonight is seeking authorization to purchase components of what's known as the Knox Box system. Um, people may know what the Knox Box system is. If you go up and down Beachmont, you'll see these four by six black boxes that sit in the mm -hmm. front. They're mm -hmm. a prominent location on all of the businesses. It's part of zoning. If new construction is required, they have it through the county. And basically what happens is the uh, owner puts access keys into these boxes that are securely affixed to the building. Each one of our medics and fire engines carries a unique, uh, uniquely keyed key that acts that will open that box. Um, you know, for, for businesses, when they're closed at night, if we get a fire alarm, it gives us immediate access to the building. There's also a residential component where residences who have people that are handicapped can't make it to the door. They can do the same thing, a much cheaper, smaller box they can hang on the, their door mm -hmm. and, um, you know, take it down when they don't need it. Mm -hmm. But essentially, not unlike a lot of electronic equipment, the manufacturer is kind of let, letting the current manufacturer or the current um, construction of the box somewhat die in the vine and we need to upgrade the system in order to uh, make sure our units still have the capability to access all the boxes. They're going online with it. Um, it's just an advanced system. It also, one of the big features of it, it enhances the accountability of those, those keys, <coughs> which is key to the system. So there's a resolution before you tonight uh, seeking the improvements to that system. I move to adopt a resolution authorizing the purchase of equipment pursuant to section 505.101 of the Ohio Revised Code. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gert? Yes. Thank and you. I could I could testify those that those keep you guys from breaking out windows when it may not be necessary and it, it saves a lot of uh, it's secure you know it's it's very secure there's no chance anyone can break in using that I've been you guys it, it's a great system. Thank you. And just for anybody that might hear this, uh, there is that residential aspect. Right. So we encourage anybody, if the business owners don't have it or any residences want it, to contact me or Chief Perlinger, and we'll make sure they get taken. We can put that. Is that information on our site? I think we should add that. Yeah. I, didn't uh, know there was a I believe it is, but if, if not, we'll make sure. That's, that's good that's information, a, that's really. That's a great yeah. mm -hmm. tool to, to have to get into maybe a senior's mm -hmm. place or whatever. Very mm -hmm. much so. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for the email. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Chief. Township Administrator. Yes. Vicki, you or Steve? Mr. Sievers has A through D. All right, good evening. Um, earlier this year, the board adopted the Clough Pike Implementation Plan. Implementation Plan, sorry. Uh, that was the result of nearly a year of public input and had a full myriad of recommendations for the future of Clough Pike. We are seeking authorization tonight to apply for two grants uh, stemming from that work, the first of which you see in the list under 12A is for an Anderson Trails link associated with that. This would be um, one of the high recommendation projects for a sidewalk on the north side of Clough Pike between the YMCA and Eight Mile Road to connect to Endo Valley and help to also install a refuge island in the middle of Clough for the crosswalk at Endo Valley to Jules Park. So you'll see that resolution before you. This would be from uh, OKI allocated transportation alternative funds and with your support, we will submit an application by the June 3rd deadline. I move to authorize a grant application to construct Anderson Trails Link along Clough Pike from Emmy Lyons YMCA to Eight Mile Road, including improved crosswalk at Indo Valley Drive, Jules Driveway, and committing local matching funds. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerd? Yes. Great. Another high-ranking project stemming from that plan was the uh, work down in the Newtown Road area by Clough Pike, so you also have an application before you to apply for OKI surface transportation block grant funds. This would be to construct a left turn lane for eastbound Clough Pike onto Newtown Road and also to uh, construct a sidewalk along Clough Pike from where it currently terminates at Newtown Road to Copperleaf Drive to collect, connect to Turpin Hills. 
you'll recall from the Harmony Senior Living discussions in early 2020, uh, 2019, excuse me, that was a major uh, concern for folks and uh, the focus here would be to utilize funds that are derived from that development to funds to ultimately provide the local match for those projects as well as our 1994 TIF. So if there's any questions, happy to answer those as well. I move to adopt the resolution authorizing grant application to construct intersection improvements to Clough Pike and Newtown Road and Anderson Trails Link along Clough Pike from Newtown Road to Copper Leaf Drive and submitting local mention funds. Second. Mr. Travis? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerd? Yes. Great. Thank you. We will certainly keep you posted. We'll know more later this year. And I should take the opportunity to, to note earlier today, or actually for the last month and a half, we've been working with Stantec. Um, for the signal timing on Clough Pike and signal improvements. We were out there today looking in the signal boxes um, and are found a lot of issues that will be resolved immediately cool. that we're working with. And then uh, we'll be looking at changing that timing probably uh, in September or so. They're gonna be doing some counts here next week before school's out, but then uh, beginning to tweak that in, in the fall. So uh, another, another immediate impact project from that work as well as some striping that you'll see hopefully coming before you here later this year. So. We're, we're anxious and eager to continue to move that forward and appreciate the board's support. Uh, next item we have is Anderson Lake Engineering. We discussed this with the board previously with the forthcoming dredging work of Anderson Lake that's planned for this summer. And we're hopeful that the bids come in within our range here when they arrive next month. We are also seeking to study the potential for um, expanding the capacity of that basin, namely uh, through some technology that allow us to draw down the lake in advance of storm events and capture additional storm water in that lake and help some of the issues we're experiencing downstream. Uh, it's been a tremendous improvement from when the lake was built here in 2007. Uh, it has sedimented in somewhat and the dredging will help, but this will allow us to, in essence, uh, build a, basically uh, develop a lake that would be one third of the size that's out there right now by using this technology. So it's with no additional land, no additional maintenance responsibilities. Uh, we think it'll be a win-win, but this engineering uh, would allow us to test those projections and um, determine if this is indeed the right system to proceed with. So. I move to authorize staff to enter into an agreement with Burgess and Nipple Inc. to provide engineering services for the study of the Anderson Lake retrofit for a cost not to exceed $20,700 as well as a 10% contingency of $2,700 using 1994 TIF funds. Second. Mr. Travis? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerd? Yes. Thank you, and we'll certainly keep you posted as that proceeds. The final item that I have is a resolution for your consideration for the disposition of real property at 7793, adjacent to 7793 Fox Trail Lane. This is a parcel of land um, that is, lies between Fox Trail Lane and, and a home on Asbury. It borders the north side of Interstate 275 between Five Mile and Asbury. The land was actually given to the township uh, approximately 15 years ago by Great Parks. And uh, so we didn't go through the full process at that point in time of determining where there might be encroachments. Uh, there was an encroachment at that time that has continued. Uh, in order to try to resolve that matter, uh, we feel it's the best, man best um, way of resolving that would be to actually transfer the land uh, to the adjoining property owner. So there is an authorization for us to sell that land and um, we will keep you posted as the board supports that of, of how that process unfolds. Uh, I move to adopt the resolution authorizing dispos disposition of real property adjoining 7793 Fox Trail Lane in the township pursuant to section 505.10A6 of the revised code, approving a real property purchase and sale agreement with Pejal R. Bot with respect thereto and authorizing the execution and delivery of said agreement. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerd? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Norman Chairhart. The next item we have for board consideration involves appointing representatives in an alternate to the Intermodal Coordinating Committee of the Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana Regional Council of Governments. Anderson Township has been involved with OKI for more than a decade, probably closer to two. And uh, the board is being asked to appoint representatives to the committee. Mr. Sievers has served as the representative to the Inter Intermodal Coordinating Committee uh, for a number of years, and Mr. Drury has served as the uh, alternate. 
the committee members provide general technical advice for OKI's executive committee and their board of directors. At this time, Mr. Severs has expressed a desire to continue in that role and furthering professional development for his staff. Mr. Drury would like to uh, suggest that Brad Bowers, one of our planners who is staffing the township's transportation advisory committee, take over as the alternate. So there is a motion before you. I move to appoint Steve Severs as Anderson Township's representative on the Intermodal Coordinating Committee of the Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana Regional Council of Governments and Brad Bowers as alternate for 2022, both to, to be installed by the OK, OKI president. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerd? Yes. Thank you. Anderson Township Board approved in 2016 a rental lease of space in this facility for the firm of Lock Lord um, LLP. Ms. Comey is our law director. She is a associate with Lock Lord and that's why she's left the room to recuse herself from this discussion. Um, we have entered into negotiations <laughs> to renew the agreement office. with Lock Lord which expired earlier this year and there is an amendment to our rental agreement before the board that would extend the agreement for three years um, effective as of May 1st this year but it would also give the tenant the one-time right to terminate the lease uh, during the first year if they choose to do so by providing written notice so there is a resolution before you for your consideration I move to adopt a resolution authorizing the execution of amendment number two to Anderson Center rental agreement pursuant to section 505.11 of the revised code. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerd? Yes. Thank you. One of the major projects that we are involved in, one of the key sites in the township, is um, the Anderson Center Station Redevelopment. We are um, working with Hills Properties to develop a vantage at Anderson Town Center. To facilitate the development of that site, there needs to be some relocation of utilities. The conduit is proposed to be laid along Anderson Center Drive coming down to our facility, and that uh, feed will then work toward Vantage uh, at Anderson Town Center, provide electricity and other supplies for that facility. So there is a resolution before you that authorizes a non-exclusive perpetual easement related to that utility relocation. I move to adopt a resolution authorizing the grant to Duke Energy Ohio Inc. of a perpetual non-exclusive easement relating to the construction and maintenance of electric, electric and or telecommunication, telecommunication overhead lines supporting equipment appurtenances fixtures and equipment over an easement area within real property owned by the township pursuant to section 50510 of the Ohio revised code. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerd? Yes. And I do want to alert the board that once we work with Spectrum um, and Cincinnati Bell and others that are involved as far as utilities that need to be relocated, we'll more than likely come back to the board for further, for further authority. The last item that we have for the board this evening is a resolution that would authorize a cooperative agreement with Metropolitan Holdings Limited. This references the Skytop development, um, Beachmont Avenue that we referred to earlier. The 1994 TIF that the board has in place allows uh, for the use of those dollars for demolition for economic development purposes. For this particular agreement, Anderson Township, if the board authorizes it, would contribute $75,000 from the 94 TIF to provide for demolition of the former Skytop development, the former Biggs, uh, Remke area. And also, the Cam Hamilton County would authorize $75,000 toward that demolition. And the owner, the property owner, would authorize $150,000 toward that demolition. So Anderson Township will be contributing one quarter of the demolition cost. There is a resolution before you. I move to adopt a resolution authorizing the execution of a cooperative agreement with Metropolitan Holdings Limited. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerd? Abstain. 
We do not have any items arising from executive session discussion, so that's all we have this evening. Thank you. Our next board meeting in this room will be June 17th at 5 for exec, 5.30 for a regular meeting. Anything else? Seeing, hearing none, move to adjourn. Second. Mr. Stafford? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Burr? Yes. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for coming. Pertinences. That's not, that's not an easy word. No, I'm like, wait a minute. I don't say and this word often.